Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this little guy. This is the Herman Knives Dragonfly. Um, very, very interesting piece. Um, kind of a cool looking knife, and uh, I, I'm really glad I got to check it out. But first off, full disclosure, this guy was provided to me by, actually not the manufacturer, but the, the, I think the sole retailer of Herman Knives, which is Polish uh, Custom Knives. Uh, they, they are, as you might predict, over there in Polish, uh, in Polish, wow, in Poland. Yes, that's the name of the country. They're over there in Poland, and uh, they, they, they've reached out to me before. I actually reviewed the uh, Hermit Knives uh, Sting, which is this guy's little brother here. Um, and they reached out to me and said, hey, you want to take a look at the bigger guy? I'm like, well, yes, I, I, I do. I very much do. So um, thank you very much to them for sending this along. But of course, I've sent them a disclaimer that's up on my website. It says, I'm going to talk about the good, the great, the bad, the ugly. It might be a gem, might be junk. Um, they still did send it along. We have to assume this is the very best quality controlled one of these guys ever. And uh, I'm doing my best not to let this affect the nature of my review. But still, there you go. That's the situation here. Let's do a size comparison right quick. This is not a small knife by any stretch of the imagination. Perhaps the, the, the easiest size comparison is actually the other Herman. Um, this is the Herman Knives Dragonfly. Um, and so you can see here that this guy is substantially bigger than the Dragonfly, although in many ways there is a uh, strong resemblance, a familial resemblance, if you will. Um, here is against the Spyderco PM2, uh, which it is actually dwarfing a little bit. This is a knife that actually looks a little bit smaller than it is. Um, and then here it is against the Ontario Rat number two and the Spydeco Delica. This is a big, big old knife right here. And actually, I'll go ahead and I'll do a quick blade length measurement on this guy. We are coming in right at four inches. This is a big, big, big freaking knife, um, at least by my standards. And so as a result, though, that's something you're going to want to keep in mind. Next thing, what the heck's a Herman Knives? Well, uh, Herman Knives is a, a run by a guy named, well, Herman, actually Bartosz Herman. Um, he's a, a custom maker from Poland, and uh, they, they they're CNC made knives, but they are custom in the sense that each one is a little bit unique. Um, you know, it's in that weird sort of uncanny valley that we're getting more and more these days is boutique CNC makers are doing, you know, models, but with different variations. Either way, he's, he's, he's doing one of those things, and he's over there in Poland, and uh, there we go. So let's go on ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of this very interesting little knife right here. So on the good side, to start with, this has a nice clip. Uh, one thing that Herman Knives seems to do a lot is to have long clips, and a lot of people are like, oh, my God, why do you need a clip that long? Um, in practice, it just makes the knife a little bit more secure in the pocket, right? Um, and it's a good clip. It has plenty of uh, give to it. It's it's just, it is fundamentally a good clip with a little bit of recessedness in there for, uh, it, you know, I, I like very much that. And the, the idea of a long clip is a beautiful thing. It tends to distribute the hot spot of tooth a little bit. Um, that, that, that's a great thing. Next thing, um, it is beautifully made, 100%. If we take a look at the machining on this guy, yeah, that's... That's good to go. Um, absolutely beautiful freaking machining all over this knife. Every part of this is just skillfully done. It is beautifully made with nice titanium, uh, nice Timascus. You can see here in the back, we have a full Timascus insert. On the, uh, not insert, we have a full Timascus backspacer. Um, and it is, in fact, Timascus. If we look at the sides of it, you can kind of see that there. Um, but it is a, a very, very nice thing. Um, and even the internal milling on this guy. If you take a look at the disassembly, you'll get a much better sense of, well, a lot of things. But um, this guy has extensive internal milling you can kind of see going on inside of there. This is a knife where they have clearly put a lot of machine time into it, not only for the outside, but for the inside as well. And that's great. It's also a very nice design. Um, it's kind of a strange design at some level. Like the front of this guy actually has a hint of buoy to it, uh, of a buoy knife uh, blade. On the, the back side is sort of something a little bit different. Um, it's definitely a little bit of a Sir Mix a lot. It's it's got a bit of a backside on it, but at the same time, I think it's a, a very nice design, and I, I, it absolutely works in the hand. Ergonomically speaking, it's it's actually pretty good. Um, there are a couple of little hot spots here to, uh, here and there, but it's 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 quite good. Next thing, the action on this guy is great. Um, I'll go ahead, no, no wrist at all. Yeah, fires 100% reliably every damn time. And then in terms of the shot attitude, drop shot. Um, this is a very, very nice action. This is a good to go sort of action on this knife. I am very, very happy as an action snob. I'm very happy with the action here. Um, that's absolutely great. And then finally, there are some really awesome details here. 
Um, it has, for instance, like I, I've already showed off this milling on the handles here, but you also get, for instance, the tips of the screws here. These are actually the same screws that are holding the knife together. It's going directly into the titanium. Not a big fan of that personally, but you can see that he's actually polished the screw heads a little bit there. You can see these are the, the screw heads that keep the lock bar in place um, on the back side there because the lock bar is inlaid in there in a different way. But anyways, um, you can see that you've polished those screw heads. The backspacer on this is a very nice thing, and the fact that it's not only Timascus, but it's time ask is with if you look at this little guy right here i'm gonna go ahead and point out this little sort of bit of an arrow going on there that's just attractive the whole damn backspacer is super attractive and by the way contrasting color uh standoffs there but um it's just a super attractive backspacer on there the signature on this is very well done um it looks like it's actually been machined into into the knife or maybe it's just a really deep etch as opposed to this guy the original, which felt more like it was laser engraved or maybe a lighter etch. Uh, whatever it is, it's a very, very nice signature, and it's I like the size of it very much. Um, and it's just classy. It's overall pretty well done. You can see here that the signature is much smaller on the bigger knife, which is a little unusual, but hey, whatever, it works. Um, So that's good. You have, uh, this is the Dragonfly model, and so you can see right in the back here, there is a Dragonfly. There's also a steel label, um, which is going on there. You can see that there's very nice uh, under the pit. Uh, oh, and by the way, the pivot is not free spinning. You can see here that there are little tiny nubs that grab the uh, pivot itself and prevent it from free spinning in the back there, which is a great thing that uh, Shirogorov could learn from. I'm sorry, did I Ah, <coughs> sorry, I got a, a bad cough there. And then finally, maybe one of the things that impresses me the most about this knife was something that I didn't notice initially, but now I have. I'll try and zoom in here. Take a look at this. This is the spine jimping. This is completely unnecessary in every way, shape, and form. But note that the final angle is the same as this angle right here of the swedge. The grind of the the swedge needs to match the angle here, and in fact, it does. So you have this gradual transition, and this actually does provide you with a little bit of texture here, but this is... That's just nice. This is completely unnecessary. He could have not done this, and the knife would have been great, but you know what? It's it's there. He did it, and the knife remains great. That's a really, really nice detail, and I find it to be, you know, eminently attractive. Um, And so, to me at least, there were a lot of those little details here, where it's just like... You didn't need to do that, even the swedge on this guy. You didn't need to do that, but you did, and I appreciate that. And so to me, all that's the good is there are these awesome details here. The action is just absolutely on point. The design on it is good. Um, it's a beautifully made knife with nice materials, and the clip works very well. To me, on the great side, I could easily put the details in the great, but to me, the blade is great here. Um, if I hold up the, the, the blade here... What we can see is that you can just barely see the edge of this blade. This is a very thin behind the edge sort of knife. And again, if I look at the very tip of this guy, yeah, that's a nice thin blade. This guy, although being a big knife, with relatively thick blade stock, has a beautiful full flat grind with a very quick plunge grind and a good sharpening choil, such that this guy narrows down to a very, very nice edge very, very quickly. And the blade itself is an M390 steel, which, if not the best steel out there in the market right now, is certainly up there toward the top of it. I mean, in my experience with the little guy, it is absolutely well heat treated there. Um, it has a very thin edge. It has a very nice plunge grind to it. It's got this beautiful swedge on there. I really do like this swedge a lot. It's it's pretty nice. Um, th but this blade is just great. It cuts like freaking crazy. Um, I, I like very, very much the, the grind on this guy. It just this is an amazing blade. And so as a result, this knife is a very, very nice tool for cutting things as well as being a beautiful object in and of itself. Um, so on the bad side, the, um, the knife is a little big. In fact, it's quite big. Four inches is going to be a lot for a lot of folks in terms of, you know, a lot of legalities where that might be an issue. So keep that in mind. It's also pretty pricey. Um, it's uh, 650 bucks. That includes a little bit of extra for the titanium, uh, I'm sorry, the Timascus backspacer. Um, but that's, that's up there. Looking at the amount of effort here, though, I'm going to be honest. I can't get too bad out of shape with it. Um, it's really, really well done, and that's that's including shipping from Poland. I I feel like this is a knife that competes very well with a lot of the other CNC made knives that are going this seven, eight hundred, nine hundred range. I mean, I, I'm not even going to talk about what this would be if it had a bear on the front of it. This this is actually a pretty competitive price, even though it is a lot of money. So do keep that in mind. Next thing, availability isn't amazing. Um, this individual knife is you know they they're done in a relatively custom batch. They they they've been people have been able to get the Sting model, uh, which I reviewed previously pretty readily, but this guy, uh, you know, again, it's going to be difficult. This is one guy with one shop, right? And so uh, th th that's definitely not one of those that you can go order, you know, one of 50 from, uh, you know, Blade HQ 
or something? No, this is sold through one retailer overseas. I mean, although they've been good to me, I've bought other things from them now. Um, it is absolutely, uh, it's a, that's a thing. Um, next thing, this is a little detail, but take a look at this. Um, they have blasted this blade very heavily. Wow, there's a bunch of oil on this. I wonder who could have done that. Anyways, um, they, they, they have blasted the blade on this guy actually pretty aggressively. I'm not even necessarily a fan of the aggressiveness of the blast here. What you can see here is that they have justifiably masked off the detent ball path, but that masking actually shows above the handle here. And so as a result, you end up with blasting, 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 polished. It's good that they mask that off. That's a good idea. But the fact that it's extending past the handle a little bit, it's 650 bucks. That's something I can kind of nitpick about. I'd like to see that done a little bit better or just do a much more subtle blast than this guy. That was a little bit much. Um, so there you go. Next thing, of course, the screws are going into directly into the other side into the titanium there. What that means, practically speaking, is if you were to strip out the screw, I'm sorry, strip out the titanium, you're going to be sending this guy back to Poland for some work. It's not ideal, but, you know, I guess it is what it is. And a lot of folks do that. Next thing, um, and this is starting to get into bigger issues. The, the flipper tab on this guy is very uncomfortable. This has a hooked flipper tab. If we take a look at it here, this has not a definite curve to it, a definite hook. And that could be great if you're wearing, for instance, gloves or something like that. But every damn time somebody does a hooked flipper tab, it's just a little painful on the finger. There's not a whole lot of reason to do that when there are so many good non-hooked flipper tabs. I mean, this, for instance, this is the Giant Mouse Ace Sonoma is a perfectly fine flipper tab. Works absolutely beautifully, and it is not hooky at all, and it's much more comfortable than that. Um, when you do these big, long pocket pecking, and this is absolutely a pocket pecker, gonna be pecking on whatever's in your pocket all day long as you carry in the knife. Um, but this is a very sharp, well, not very sharp, it's not gonna cut you open, but it's an unpleasant feeling uh, little hook corner there, and I, I really just dislike these hook flipper tabs. So that's something. Next thing, disassembly is not a, a good thing for the Herman knives in general. Um, it is definitely a little bit better than the sting where a bunch of the screws were actually underneath the clip and so you couldn't put the clip on until things were in alignment but then and then this had even more backspace it was a thing but you saw though that this was an odyssey um i like the knife a lot and i like herman knives a lot but his biggest weakness right now aside from the pivots is is the disassembly process his knives are not really well thought out for disassembly i think there were ways to make them a lot nicer in that way but that's unfortunately not the approach that he's taken so um disassembly is definitely a problem and you've also got tiny little bearings that are slipping out of a cage. One thing to highlight, though, is that unlike the sting, um, alongside the knife, uh, I was actually sent a, a uh, basically a bag with a couple of these bearings in there. In case I lost one of the bearings, I would be able to do that and swap that out. Um, that's a really nice thing. Anytime that you're dealing with weird little precision parts, providing a couple of extras is a great idea, especially when they're loose bearings, although they look like they're caged. So that's a great idea. And then finally, um, the knife actually came a little bit more dull than I expected. It actually, it came pretty dull. I would say in terms of sharpness, this was maybe in the bottom 10% of knives that I've gotten. And in fact, I had the same issue with every Herman I've gotten. Um, the, the original factory sting definitely had a bit of a dull edge. The, uh, the, the, the I ended up, get, I bought a Damascus one, uh, which I, I, I like a lot, by the way, but I ended up moving back to this original one just because, I don't know, I... I I think it was a knife that was better served by the simplicity. Anyways, I digress. Um, but uh, all three of the Hermans I've now handled, and actually my buddy, uh, Nehemiah over at Metal Effort Channel, um, bought one as well, and his was dull as well. So I just, sharpness is definitely a problem. I had to bring this guy up to, to, to a very light, you know, pass on some stones and then, you know, strop it up to, to, to a nice edge on day freaking one. Um, as Whereas most knives are coming pretty sharp out of the box these days. And so to me, that's what's bad, is that it came a little bit dull. Disassembly isn't great. It has this hooked flipper tab that is pocket pecking, not super comfortable. The screws are going straight into the other scale. They, they masked off a part of the blade that is very visible uh, as you're deploying the knife. Um, availability isn't amazing. It's kind of pricey and it is very big. On the ugly front, um, and it's also relatively heavy. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that I was, I was talking about the bigness. Um, we're looking at four, uh, four inches, 5.46 ounces here. Um, it's not the end of the world, but it is definitely a heavy knife. So keep that in mind. On the ugly front, there is only one ugly thing and you all know exactly where I was going right immediately there. This is this guy. This is a proprietary pivot. Um, it has a security center, meaning that you can't get a normal, and this isn't by the way, even a Torx bit. It uh, doesn't have the right number of lobes. Um, he gives you a wrench for it. With every knife, there is a little wrench, and it works. I mean, you just put this guy on there, and once you index it, you can righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. It, it works out. It's okay. And because the other side is held in place, you don't need to worry about it. But the, same, the, the simple fact is... 
Like, how is this any less pretty? Or how, I'm sorry, how is this any more pretty than just a good old-fashioned, like, T25 or something like that? I mean, he could have just as easily done on this, you know, this is, no, this is T30. So this would have been about a T30 size. Could have just as easily done something like that. And it would have been no less attractive, but everybody would have been able to have the tool instantly, and it would be a vertical tool. Because it's so much more of a pain in the neck to use a tool that is horizontal and you're sliding around the scales rather than just doing a, a tool that goes in like this. So I really wish he would have just used the T30. These are a thing, and it doesn't look any worse than this does. Um, and that way we wouldn't have to dick around with the tool at all. And if I lost the tool, you know what? I don't care because it's just the same tool that everything else is. So I really dislike very much the use of a proprietary screw. This is a thing that Herman is doing all the damn time. We've got one here. We've got one. For some reason, it's a thing that he does, but it's a thing that I don't think he should do. Um, this comes back to the idea that this assembly doesn't seem to be favored over there, and that's an area I can see wanting to work on a little bit as a maker, at least from my estimation. So to me, at least, um, that's the ugly on this guy, uh, which is that it is a proprietary tool with a security center on there. Um, and the, although they include the tool, they shouldn't have to. Final conclusion, though, I actually like this knife just a whole lot. This is a really, really nice piece um, because it's got an awesome action. It's got a great clip, a great design. It's beautifully made it, with absolutely some stellar details on here and just a blade that cuts like crazy. This is a really, really nice little blade. Mind you, it is expensive. 650 bucks, that's, that's not trivial. And there are some little issues here. The flipper tab is an awesome, disassembly is an awesome. The sharpening could use a little bit more work, and for some damn reason, he's using this weird proprietary screw head for the pivot rather than the T30 that it damn near already is. Uh, guys, come on, Herman. Um, we, we can do better than this. Um, uh, but th th nonetheless, this is a knife that I actually grew to like a lot. This is a knife that found its way into my pocket a lot more than I might expect it to. I don't generally tend to do much larger knives. I mean, four inches is a lot of knife for me in my daily life. The, the, the sting is much more my speed. That's coming in at, uh, oh, what is that? 3.25, uh, 3.3. .3. This is much more my size. But the thing is, I like this knife a whole bunch. And this ended up getting pulled into my pocket, even on days when I didn't really need to get. I found myself dragging my feet a little bit, actually, on doing the disassembly just because, or, I'm sorry, I'm doing the review just because I want to keep carrying the guy, right? And so that means that it is a, a, a good tool. It's a good object, and it is profoundly effortful. Um, this is a knife where Herman is clearly putting in a bunch of effort. Um, 100%, all of the things that I'm seeing done here are just like going the extra mile. And that's something that one of the, the, the CNC makers need to be doing right now. There are big CNC companies that are not really doing that. They're putting out work that is very expensive, but also a little bit on the lazy side, where they're not really doing all that much to earn their price point. This feels like it's really going above and beyond. Um, and the, the result of this is a knife that is absolutely not perfect, but we which is absolutely good enough. I mean, it kept finding its way back into my pocket, even though it's just too big for my life, and that is a pretty good indicator that this knife here is a gem. Just like its smaller version, this is an absolutely wonderful piece right here. The Dragonfly is a great, great knife, and Herman's work keeps impressing me. Right now, I would say that Herman is running with some of the best CNC makers out there. He needs to work on the disassembly if he really wants to get up into the upper echelon, so to speak. Um, and maybe availability could get a little bit better. But honestly, I've been really impressed with everything I've seen. And in fact, a number of people, after my first review of the Sting, where I ran out and got one, and I, I'm yet to meet a person who was completely unhappy with theirs, who had a major issue with it. Um, or at least if I did, I sure don't remember it. So that's a really good sign, generally, especially from a boutique maker. If Herman is putting out consistent quality over and over again, that just makes this even more a gem. So I'm really, really impressed with Herman Knives lately. Um, by all means, uh, Bartosz, keep it up. I am very impressed. Let the fix, the pivots, but nevertheless, you're making great designs, you're doing them well, and, and you, you, putting in all of that effort, and that to me at least is an absolutely beautiful thing. So anyways, there you go. I hope this has been interesting to you, that this, uh, that, 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 I, I have no idea where I'm going to go with that. There's not really a pun here, but um, I, I hope that this has been interesting <laughs> and that you have yourselves a wonderful rest of the day i gotta go drag and fly away from this embarrassing laugh of, or lack of puns oh god i even screwed that one up all right we're done here <laughs> have a good one everybody <laughs> bye now oh 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 he has absolutely raised the bar though sherman uh with this one there we go that was that wasn't good either all right have a good one everybody bye now